All right, everybody, how are we doing today? Welcome back to another episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Uh, today is January 9th. Hope hope everyone's having a good day. I hope everyone had a good weekend. Uh, appreciate everyone who was able to watch the last video with me and Dylan. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully, you also check out the Instagram post that I made uh, with some of the favorite clips and favorite moments from the video. It was actually very funny. Uh, it always gave me a good laugh, but uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, the... The handle for the Instagram uh, for the Robbie Basil Show is in the description. So what am I talking about today? Because for those who didn't watch the last video, I briefly mentioned this. Friday's video, one, I think I'm going to pre-record it. I don't know when, but the video will go up on Friday previewing the Asian Cup, AFCON, uh, the Australian Open. I know will be in that video. Uh... A lot more, actually, those three things. But I wish I would say a lot more because that's also going to be the last video I record um, in this in my house because uh, my break ends. Uh, I go back to, to Iona uh, on th on Sunday, so you guys will be able to see oh, everything going on. Uh, everything will be back to normal ish, uh, and I will be back in the regular of uh, back in the old room for another semester of broadcasting or recording videos on this channel and hopefully we get back to into the stands and all that excited to go back to work with them uh, updates on that well there isn't anything yet um hopefully we get on before the super bowl but at this point i have no idea i got nothing right now <laughs> hopefully we get on before the super bowl that's the idea but anyway Let's talk about, and if we don't, I'll tr maybe try to get these guys on here to do a video with me. We'll see. But, let's break down what is going on. Uh, also on Friday, I almost forgot to mention this, they, we should have our update possibly on the Brazil situation, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, actually, no. We'll start with this. Uh, here, Here is the news from FIFA yesterday. FIFA rules out sanctions against Brazil. So that's a very interesting development. FIFA has gone... I mean, I mean this is an interesting one. Uh, the chief of the CBF actually returned. So this is the, the breaking the news from yesterday. That So yesterday I recorded a video, and it's not very good because I missed out some of the coaching firings. So we're recording it again. And this is what I didn't get to see yesterday. It was from Rio. World Soccer's governing body of FIFA has ruled out sanctions against Brazil following the return of the country's FA president, uh, Rodriguez, who was removed by a court in Rio last month. So, essentially, nothing's going to happen. And, you know, it's... it's I don't know. I, I mean, it would have been weird uh, to see the um, see FIFA suspend a giant nation like this, but, nah, this is an, a very interesting start to the day. Um... The CBF, or Brazil's FA, uh, wanted to organize new elections after a dispute over the electoral process, and then uh, the federal Supreme Court ordered the return, and so then FIFA did Basically, this firing, we talked about it in the, I think it was two videos ago now, uh, the situation at hand. It was actually the last video of 2023. Where I said, like, this can re really affect Brazilian football. It could really affect the Brazilian national team. And FIFA didn't suspend them, possibly because they brought the president back. I don't know. Whole weird development that I didn't see coming. I th actually thought they were going to suspend Brazil. They didn't do that. So, listen, it's a whole weird situation that really could have been avoided if Brazil's FA ha didn't want to remove their president and want didn't want to change. But... You know, the CV, the, new, the president Rodriguez thanked the FIFA and the South America's governing body. I thought Condembol was going to do it, but Condembol didn't suspend him either. So, uh, the, the quote was, we were happy that we we're back to the original situation, which Brazilian football elected its president. Brazilian football was at a high risk of being expelled from international competitions. No kidding. Uh, that was ruled out for the moment after the Supreme Court decision and is no longer on the table. So basically the, the Supreme Court went after it. Um, Brazil, we you know we know the situation there on World Cup qualifying. You've seen the recent videos. You the videos back from like forever ago. You know the situation Brazil is in and how bad this can possibly get for Brazil. But that's the situation there. 
let us now go into what happened over the weekend. And no, I am not talking the NFL yet, because I didn't get to talk about the FA Cup. There's a whole song. I'm not singing the song. Screw that, Chet. But the third round of the FA Cup went, went, happened over the weekend. Uh, it started on Thursday, and it ended yesterday. And the draw came out, and everything is chaos. Let's break it down immediately. Starting us off, we had Crystal Palace and Everton play. The most boring game I could possibly watch. Thank God I didn't watch it. Nil-nil. Uh, combined total XG. I mean, Everton out XG. Uh, Palace, but Everton got a red card with Calvert-Lewin, who we went after on the recording of the Premier League video, which I believe we recorded, you know, yeah, we recorded it on Thursday before that game started, and then Calvert-Lewin got a red card. Amazing work there. Uh, they have to play a replay. I don't know when it is, but actually I can tell you right now when it is. Uh, the replay is on the 17th. Okay. Uh, on Friday, we had a Brentford draw Wolves and another frustrating result for Brentford despite out xG Wolves off the field. Brentford, another frustrating result for them. They go out and draw 10-man Wolves after Wolves got a red card. They play in a replay on January 16th, which is a week from the, the day we're recording this video. Should be interesting to see how that turns out. Um, we also had Fulham continue to frustrate and confuse everyone after they went out and beat Rotherham. They did win. One to nothing. What was the XG, you ask? Rotherham had 0.11 XG, so they didn't really do anything. 21 shots to three, one to nothing. Feels like an Arsenal result, but it wasn't. More on Arsenal later. Fulham dominated possession, but shows their real... Uh, um, in effect... That's not even the right word for this. They they just can't score, and they won one to nothing. Good for them. Tottenham beat Burnley. Uh, Pedro Porro had the score in the 78th minute to, to not force a replay. Uh, I mean, listen, Burnley actually looked pretty decent in this match. 1.17 XG, 10 shots against Tottenham is not bad. However, conceding 16 shots to Tottenham is, and well, 1-0 since Tottenham to the next round, where they did not get a fun draw. I'll tell, them, I'll tell you that right now. And then Saturday's chaos. You know, we have the usual big teams win, like Ispwich Town. Uh, Maidstone United. Shout out to Maidstone United. Aren't they in, like, the National League South? Here in the Vonorama National League South. In fifth. And they went out and made it to the next round of the Cup. This is the magic of the FA Cup. Do not change it. Uh, Newcastle beat Sunderland 3 to nothing. Blackburn. We know about Blackburn. They're a famous Premier, a former Premier League club at this point. Uh, Norwich drew Bristol Rovers. Norwich is never getting back to the prime, it feels like, at this point. Uh, we'll talk about that game. This is another game in a second. We have a lot of replays. Brighton beat Stoke. Good for them. Chelsea scored some goals. They look good against Preston North End. Uh, maybe Swansea beat Morecambe. That's the other big result. Um, so there's two games I want to talk about more in depth with this. And starting us off, we have Queens Park Rangers go up 2-0 at home to Bournemouth and bottle it. Now, you would not think, with the lineup that Bournemouth threw out on the field, for them to struggle this much. And they really did. I mean, going down 2 to nothing, they had Tavernier, then Kiefer Moore, and then Clavert scored the winner. Three goals in the span, 21 minutes in the second half. Send Bournemouth through to the next round. They did not look great. Though they did not have use Dominic Solanke. Made sense. It's Dominic Solanke. We, we, you saw the praise I had for him last week. He's a very good player. Didn't play in this match. It, it's just a, There's a player to highlight on Queens Park Rangers. I guess it's Sinclair Armstrong. Uh, he had by himself, I don't know, 0.34 XG. The 20-year-old Irishman. 7.8 rating. Good for him. Uh, their best player was Sam Field, according to FootMob ratings. Uh, he had an 8.1. He had the most tackles in the match. But that was one confusing result. And then we have this one. Middlesbrough nil, Aston Villa 1? Is Villa okay? Like, granted, they're playing the backups, yes. But you saw players like Ezra... Let's look at Aston Villa's lineup real quick. They had Duran up front with Ramsey, McGinn, and Bailey in the midfield with then Donker and Kamara behind. Moreno, Ezra Kunsa, Langlet, Matty Cash, which is very similar to the lineup the, that we saw in a game, I believe it was Sheffield United, 
Uh, and then Emmy Martinez in goal. Also, shout out to former uh, Liverpool man. I think, actually, sorry, Manchester United player. Wow, I almost say he was Liverpool. That is terrible for me. Uh, shout out to former Manchester United player uh, Michael Carrick is the manager at Middlesbrough. And I did not know that. I uh, really thought he played for Liverpool for a second there, but I had to stop and think. He, yeah, he played for Manchester United uh, all those years ago. Uh, it took a goal from Matty Cash, assisted by substitute midfielder Douglas Louise, to go out there and beat Middlesbrough. Not very promising for Maston Villa there. And then we have the usual res- results. Like, Luton Town just drawing Bolton Wanderers, who are in League One. Not very good there from Luton. Nil, nil. Bolton... They didn't look great. They didn't look bad, though. Nottingham Forest is to play a replay. They drew Blackpool, uh, who haven't been in the Premier League in like a decade-ish, I think, now. It was like 2012. I don't know. Uh, we Leeds won, win. Wrexham, Ryan Reynolds' his boys, went out and won one to nothing over Shrewsbury Town. West Ham drew Bristol. West Ham won. Bristol City won. Jared Bowen scores. I think Paqueta got injured again. Um, but they've made two early substitutions uh, with Paqueta, who had an assist. Uh, Mavropanos uh, subbed off. I don't know what the reason was. If I could find it, I would let you know. Um, he won the free kick. Yeah, he, so it was an injury to Mavropanos. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. We, we also know Paqueta got injured. We'll see the injury updates for them, hopefully, when we talk about the Premier League later in the week. Uh, and then we have Arsenal lose to Liverpool. They had a million chances. This, the finishing on this team is just amazing. I mean, look at the stats. 1.76 xG to 0.64. Arsenal out xG Liverpool. Check. Outshot Liverpool. Check. More big chances. Check. Better passing. Check. More discipline. Check. Shots on target. Check. They had all that stats more than Liverpool. What else did they have more of? Big chances missed. They did. Arsenal had five big chances missed. More xG. Lost two to nothing at home. This team is in free fall, and it it's really should be something that goes under a microscope because what this team has done recently is very concerning. They go out. They've now lost three in a row. They have Crystal Palace on the 20th. They're off this week. So as we're really going to be able to see, wow, how can this team go out there and still be the lower-level clubs? Because don't forget, Arsenal play Liverpool on, on February 4th. They have to play Liverpool again very soon. Arsenal are in a very concerning position, and I don't know how they get out of it, but I think it's going to really just start with who plays up top. Bukayo Saka, not in great form. Martinelli, not in great form. I don't know who Arsenal puts up front in order to get them back into a position where they can go out and win games, go out there and try to make a push to win the leagues. I don't think they're really going to be able to push it that far now due to the lack of quality in the, in the, in the front three. They, no one can score on this freaking team. It's concerning. I don't I, I, do they make a move in the window? I would love Dominic Solanke, but this, he's going to cost too much with the FFP situation. But Arsenal continuing to struggle. I mean, only 19 goals from open play this season. They're now playing Palace, and they get Nottingham Forest, who I know is going to be a problem. Liverpool, West Ham, and then they have an easy match with Burnley before having to play in the Champions League away to Porto. So the next couple of games, I'd say the next month, from a little month, so five weeks, essentially are very important to Arsenal's season. You have two of the higher-level teams in the league, in Liverpool and West Ham. You have your Champions League match. How do they come out and play these matches? That's something I want to watch out for. Arsenal are out of the FA Cup. Hate to see it. And then yesterday, we had uh, Wigan. Actually, sorry. We have to go back to Sunday real quick, because there's one game I forgot. Manchester City won 5 to nothing. I believe we saw the return of De Bruyne. I'm scared. I'm very scared of Man City now. I have to say that. And then we had uh, Wigan uh, predictably lose to Manchester United. Manchester United uh, went up two goals, and that's about it. I can't, for some reason, look at the stats right now. But, you know, Manchester United went on and scored goals. Against, I believe they're a League One team now. I don't know. Let me, let me look at this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Wigan, I thought they were in League One. I could be wrong. They are in League One. Okay. Um, J- Dallas scored, and then, of course, they had to score a penalty because it's Manchester United, and they can't score from open play. But two goals from United. Concerns? Are there really any? Uh, all players in the green in the match range, what would you else would you expect? They're playing a League One team. Must be nice. Today we have the EFL Cup. Chelsea's playing Middlesbrough, if you care about that. And Liverpool, Liverpool's playing full. If we don't have a Chelsea-Liverpool final, I don't know what else to say. So now, what are the ties for the FA Cup fourth round? Or whatever round it is. Uh, we have... Let's look over our ties. Starting us off, we have Watford is playing Southampton. Blackburn's playing Wrexham. That's a terrible draw for Wrexham. I think Blackburn's going to run them off the field. Bournemouth got Swansea. Great draw for for Bournemouth. West Brom is playing the winner of Brentford and Wolves since they have to play a replay. Uh, and then we have a match number five is the battle of two replays. West Ham and Bristol is playing the winner of Nottingham Forest and Blackpool. I would assume it's Nottingham Forest and West Ham, but I have no idea at this point. Leicester City is playing the winner of Hull and Birmingham. Sheffield Wednesday is playing Coventry. Chelsea is playing Villa. I would like that tie. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Ispwich is playing 6th tier Maidstone. For Maidstone, it could have been worse. The only problem is it's a way to Ispwich. I don't think they would like that trip. Liverpool got probably Norwich City or it's Norwich or Bristol Rovers. Tottenham is playing City. That's fun. Leeds is playing Plymouth. I... I like Plymouth in that game, even though it is away. I kind of like Pl- this Plymouth team this year. They're actually... Isn't Plymouth, like, not doing that terrible? I want to make sure I have this right, because I don't remember Plymouth being bad. Let me find their game from the weekend. Because I know it was Saturday. They beat Sutton United 3-1. to Plymouth... Are, oh, yeah, because they just got to the championship. That's why I thought they were decent. They're a mid, lower mid-table team in the championship. That's not the worst draw ever. They're playing Leeds. I think Leeds are going to struggle with that match. Then we have Crystal Palace and Everton play the winner of Luton Town or Bolton. I like that tie. I think that tie is going to be underrated. If Bolton can go out there and grab a result, I think they could beat Palace or Everton. I'm really serious. None of those teams like the score. They can force a replay back at Bolton. I really think Bolton can make it to the fifth round. I'm serious. But they, their first task has to be play Luton. I think Luton might have a chance, has a very solid chance. Of course, they're going to be favored to win that match. But I think if there's any team that wants to cause some spoilers, it's going to be Bolton Wanderers. Then we have Newport County against Eastley. Uh, we'll play Manchester United. What is with Manchester teams getting like the easiest draws ever? Other than, I mean, last round, City got Huddersfield and United got Wigan. And Arsenal got Liverpool. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, Sheffield is playing Brighton in an all-prem match. And then Fulham is playing Newcastle. A lot of fun ties. The FA Cup is amazing. Uh, hopefully it doesn't change. For, you know, we already probably know what's going to. So now, there's the only there's a couple of prem matches we have to talk about uh, for the weekend. I believe there's like, I don't know, like four. We start us off with Burnley and Luton Town. If you look at this Luton team, and I talked about it last last week. Um, they're not great um, in finishing games. And you've seen that again. But I think they're re- much better at home. They've gone out and beat Newcastle. They've had one goal losses to, uh, what was it, United, Arsenal, Chelsea, I think. Actually, Chelsea was a one goal loss too. They're gonna, I think they're going to struggle down the road. I like Burnley in this game. Uh They did just barely lose to Tottenham, so I think Burnley is going to have a very good shot, though. I do expect this game to be a draw, but I really would... If I had to pick a winner, I really would side with Burnley in this situation. I mean, Chelsea-Fulham on Saturday. I don't know what to think about this one. I mean, Chelsea, they're a good team, but Fulham is like, you never know what you're going to get. I'm not going to pick a winner for this one because I have no idea how this is going to go. Fulham have won back-to-back after losing back-to-back. Chelsea have won... have gotten points in four of their last five, including winning three in a row. If you look at uh, the insights for this team, uh, Chelsea have won the last two against Fulham, but, I mean, Fulham doesn't really score, so I really, I think they're bottom half of the league in scoring goals. Chelsea are in the top half of the league in scoring goals. I'd back Chelsea, but I think this game could really go either way, or a Chelsea block, one of the two. On Saturday, we have Newcastle against City as well. 
I, I'm going to back Newcastle. I, I really am. And the reason I'm saying that is because Newcastle's, like, unstoppable at home. It's like facing Thanos, uh, like, the whatever the first one of the movies were. Not, what was it, Infinity War? And I don't know. But if you're facing uh, Thanos, he's collected the Infinity Stones. New, that's how Newcastle plays at home. They're really good at home this season. They're basically near unstoppable. If you take a look at the stat, they have eight wins from ten at home. And City, how good are they on the road? Not too shabby themselves. Six wins from ten on the road. However, they do might swing De Bruyne into the slats. I think that could really cause a change in this game. I'm thinking draw or a win for Newcastle. I really think this is where Newcastle turns it around. It's a win against City here. Then we have Everton and Villa. I think this game is going to be really boring. I think not much is going to happen. I'm going to see Villa wins one to nothing, And then Manchester United and Tottenham. I like a draw, actually, uh, if we really think about it. United, they don't score. Tottenham, I mean, they've, they've got, they haven't been shut out in a while. I'm not going to back a shutout here, but United at home. Uh, they haven't played at home since their match with Villa. They have recently lost to Nottingham Forest, West Ham, and they drew Liverpool after getting ran off the field by Liverpool. So I really am expecting a draw or a one-goal win for Tottenham. But I, I'm thinking United gets a point out of this solely because it's playing at they're playing at home. They're not very good, though. They're, I don't know. I really don't know. They're, they do lose a lot of players due to um, international breaks. To be fair, both teams do. Tottenham loses Son Heung Min Son, Saar and Basuma. If they got Manchester United, they lose Andre Onana, Ahmed and Amrabat. Um, they're all suspended anyway, so it's actually kind of funny. Uh, is there any matches on Monday? No, because we. That's when like the Afcon and Asian Cup stuff starts. So Afcon and Asian Cup starts. Well, one of them starts on Thursday or Friday, and then the other one starts. At, I don't freaking know anymore. Let me just make sure of this. Uh, shout out to the first game of either of those tournaments. Uh, we have, I believe it's on Friday. Uh, yep, Friday. We have Qatar and Lebanon. If you want to watch that game, it's at 11 a.m. I don't know how you watch it, though. Now it is time for the National Football League. And after the chaos from last week, it must be talked about. So let us begin... But the game recaps of this week, starting us off, we have the snooze fest of Saturday, Steelers and the Ravens. The Ravens were basically playing the backups, and the Steelers played a, won a meaning, actually what turns out to be a very meaningful game for the Steelers. Uh, they went out and won 17-10. They didn't look very good, but to be fair, the Ravens were playing their backups. It was, it was terrible weather. Steelers went out and won. Then we had the Texans and the Colts. Listen, I love this Texans team. I think they can go for Excuse me. I think they can actually go decently far. It's really going to depend on a couple of factors. And while I predict the playoffs, which I'm going to do after this, after I talk about this game, the week, oh, this week, I'll break the, I'll pick you, tell you my favorites for the wild card games this week, and I'll tell you who I think is going to win the Super Bowl out of the teams remaining, including one of my Super Bowl pick is still in the playoffs. It was the Niners, if you remember from the first video. Are any of my award winners going to happen? I don't think so. Well, to be fair, though, to be fair, though, Joe Burrow got injured. So, and then Aaron Rodgers got injured. So, you really can't go after me here. I mean, TJ Watt got hurt, too. Anthony Richardson got hurt. All my picks got injured, essentially. And DeMar Hamlin barely played. Yikes. I also see I had the Ravens not making the playoffs, so I already looked like a fool there, but... Did have a decent a couple of the teams in the playoffs. Uh, I didn't have the Texans in. Ah, whatever. But the Texans made the playoffs. The Colts made a mistake. They pulled out JT on a fourth and one or fourth and two, whatever whatever it was. Threw a, a pass out to the running back. He dropped it. That's the game. Not a great throw by Minshew. Colts have a lot to build on. I'm interested to see how they come out next year. Of course, they didn't have AR-15 and Anthony Richardson at the starting quarterback position. I feel like he offers a little bit more. Uh, movement in the pocket. He's tall. He's physical. He's coming off an injury. I'm interested to see how he comes back from the injury next season. And then we open the day with what? No, before we talk about the meaningful games, we just let's just get some of the meaningless games out the way. The New York Jets beat the Patriots. Right us off into the sunset. Another year. Another seven and ten. Next, 
The Jets' defense looked good. Trevor Simeon played awful in a snowy day in Foxborough. Brees Hall is that dude, and he will be a top-five running back next year. Brees Hall is that guy. Bucks played the Panthers. I, I, I know I was saying meaningless games. This game felt meaningless because it ended 9-0. Next. Bengals beat the Browns. Uh, Jake Browning uh, is making his case to be a starter somewhere else. Sort of. I mean, he went 18-24 for 156 and three touchdowns. Good for him. Uh, they won against the Cleveland Browns. The Broncos lost to the Raiders 27-14. to Um yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about that. The Chiefs beat the Chargers. Um, any other meaningless games? Uh, the Cowboys beat the Commanders. That's semi-meaningless. Now I, the Lions beat the Vikings. That's another thing that was meaningless. To the meaningful games. And the reason I'm talking about this now, because this one it feels like it makes no sense. The Titans beat the Jaguars, and, after the, and then just today, Mike Vrabel got sacked. He is fired as head coach of the Titans. Does it make any? Does it make sense? Yes and no. I just feel like you just went out and eliminated Jacksonville and you got fired after a win. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. But a firing coach after a win. But listen, the Titans have parted ways with Vrabel. Um, We'll see what the Titans do next at their head coach. Hopefully, they have someone who actually just doesn't want to run the ball every five minutes. But what I meant by that is like run it every freaking play. Tannehill, though. Tannehill got his, his swan song of Tannehill, maybe. I don't freaking know. The Titans won. Saints beat the Falcons to eliminate the Falcons. And then Arthur Smith got fired. He was pissed about how the Saints played the end of the game. Dennis Allen apologized for it, which I think was kind of cool. But... I don't know. We have the Packers beat the Bears to make the playoffs. Good for the Green Bay Packers. I did have them making the playoffs. I did have them as a wild card team. And on top of that, I think they were the seventh seed. So, yeah, pretty good move by me. Um, this is one of the few picks I got right. Cowboys beat the Commanders. I already said that. The Giants beat the Eagles. And Wink Martindale resigned. Why? I have no idea. Very interesting development. I talked to some uh, some of my friends who are Giants fans. They are all, um, I think I could put this one word to combine all the feelings. They are frustrated uh, that Wink Martindale is on. Because I'll be honest with you, I think Wink Martindale did a pretty okay, decent, I don't know what you would have worded this, a job as the defensive coordinator. Because he didn't really have much to work with. But the Giants are going to be a team that are going to have a very interesting offseason. I believe Xavier McKinney. I think he might be a free agent this year. I know Saquon is. He might have played his last game as a Giant. And how did he do? Um, I mean, Tyrod Taylor really stole the show. 23 of 32 for 297. Um, the Eagles benched Hurts mid-game. They went with Marcus Mariota because they knew the situation the Cowboys were in. Um, the Giants did have to play Tommy DeVito for a minute, and then Tommy DeVito might have gotten injured. Uh, Ty- Tyrod Taylor steals the show, 23-32 for 297 and a touchdown. Saquon ran for two touchdowns. Good for them. Giants win a meaningless game and hurt their draft spot Draft spot uh, by one pick. Good for them. Uh, the Seahawks beat the Cardinals, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, well, it would have mattered. Uh, if I think it would have mattered if the Rams lost, but the Rams won by one with the exact same score the Seahawks did. The Rams make the playoffs after beating the Niners by one. Did the Niners play a starter? Nope, they didn't. They started Sam Darnold, uh, and they got the Rams to make the playoffs. Good for the Rams. Uh, is there any game I missed? Don't think so. Other than the Bills, they beat the Dolphins. I was able to watch this game. I love this contest a lot. The Bills beat the Dolphins 21-14. Josh Allen threw for 359 yards, yet still had two turnovers, and Tua messed up, and Tua cost his team the game, partially. Josh Allen really stepped up when he needed to. Threw for 359 yards, including making some spectacular throws. The refs missed his hand going out of bounds. But then again, the Dolphins don't need any help. It's the Dolphins. I don't like the Dolphins. But I'll try not to act biased here. The Dolphins are going to be our playoff team. They're going to be the sixth seed. They're playing the Chiefs. I'll tell you how I like that. What I think about that matchup in a moment. Including why it's stupid this game is on a streaming service. Speaking of the of uh, things that shouldn't be on a streaming service, welcome to the NFL playoffs. Um, we finally made it. And I started, I, I made season predictions. 
Uh, they went okay. We'll take a look at did it, how many of my teams actually made the playoffs. So, take a look at the AFC. I already see that the Kansas City Chiefs is the one seed. That was pretty bad. Uh, I did have the Bills winning the division. How's the, uh, the Chiefs winning the division, of course. But that was the only two division picks I got right. Cincinnati, I was really high on this year uh, with Burrow, but he got hurt, and that was that for them. Jacksonville, I had winning their division, but they choked it. Uh, other playoff teams I got right, I only got the Dolphins right. I had the Chargers and the Jets in the playoffs, and the Ravens missing out barely to the Jets. Also, the Browns barely missing out. At least they're on this, the barely missing out part of the list. I don't feel that terrible. Uh, in the NFC, I had the NFC West winners, and that was about it. I had all three wild cards make the playoffs, so I had, what, 6 of 14? Seven of four. I had half the teams. In one of the cr crazier NFL seasons, I had half the teams. I'm going to say that's pretty bad, but we don't know. Like I said, my awards were pretty bad because everyone's injured. Um, but my Super Bowl pick is still alive. Kind of. My team I had winning the Super Bowl is still alive. Let's take a look at the games for this weekend. Starting us off with the Browns and the Texans. Joe Flacco against the Texans is C.J. Stroud. I like the Texans in this game. I know the Browns... The Browns have had a lot of adversity this year. They lost Nick Chubb. They lose... I mean, they had to start Joe Flacco at quarterback. But Joe Flacco has really stepped up, and he might have made himself a good amount of money this offseason. I don't know what team he, it would be with. Could this be the swan song of Joe Flacco? I have no idea. But listen, I like the, the Texans in this game. I just think they're with, riding with so much momentum. Really, they are a team that knows how to come from behind, knows how to play in some of these tougher games. The, I think the Browns' de defensive front is going to cause some problems. I think this is a low-scoring game. 17-13 to 13 is going to be my final score. I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. I just like their offensive uh, push with Nico Collins and, and company a little bit more. I don't know why. I'm going to go with the Texans. I mean, I have the Bills over the Steelers. I think this one's pretty predictable here. I think Josh Allen's going to have a... Somewhat of a field day, especially with TJ Watt being out, though. I'm going to see. I don't know if Alex Highsmith is is injured or not. I really haven't paid attention to the Steelers this year. But I think the Bills are going to walk through. Not walk through. I'm thinking it's going to be a 24-10. Give me the Buffalo Bills. Then I, we have the streaming service game, which quick. Uh, public PS, I think it's PSA, I think is what you have to say for this. Why is this game on a streaming service? I think that was pretty dumb. Uh, I have the Chiefs beating the Dolphins in a very close game at Arrowhead. It's going to be cold. I don't think Tua adapts to the temperature well. I don't think the Dolphins really adapt very well until the second half. I think the Chiefs blow it open early, and I think the Dolphins are really going to work their way from behind. I'm going to say the three-point win for the Kansas City Chiefs. Dolphins turn it over late and end the game on a turnover. Then in the NFC, I have the Cowboys beating the Green Bay Packers. I think this game is going to be very close, but the Packers, I mean, not the Packers, the Cowboys at home have been near unstoppable. And we've seen that all throughout the season. I think the Dallas Cowboys go out there and win this game. Uh, then my big upset of the playoffs this year, I have the Los Angeles Rams beating the Detroit Lions. And the big reason I'm talking about this is the playoff experience of, the, of this Los Angeles Rams team. Granted, they, you, what, this, they were, they're very interesting. You, you go out and lose Jalen Ramsey, uh, and they still made the playoffs. They've lost some other pieces. I think Aaron Donald's going to have a field day. I think Aiden Hutchinson versus Aaron Donald on the ends, I think it's going to be a phenomenal thing to watch out for. So anyway, this is a close game. Say Rams win by seven points. I think the Lions, Jared Goff against his former team, Matt Stafford against his former team. I think Matt Stafford goes out to Detroit. He knows the environment. He knows what it's like. I think he goes out and gets a big-time win. Then I have the Eagles over the Bucks. I think this game is going to be probably the worst one of the six. I think this one's going to end 24 to 9. Uh, I don't think the the Bucks score a touchdown in this game. I think the Eagles really come together, and this is the time to shine for the Eagles. Uh, this is when they're really going to try and go out there and make a statement briefly. I'm going to say briefly because, well, you'll see why I say that in a second. So let me load up my playoff predictor here. So like I said, just to walk through the results again of who I had winning this game. Just making sure this thing is secure. I don't know why. Huh. Interesting. I've never seen this before. 
Connection secure. Good. Um, all right. So let's let us break down the playoffs. So like I said, we have the Cowboys, the Rams, and the Eagles. We have Buffalo, KC, and Houston. I'm going to go to the NFL divisional rounds now. This is my Super Bowl like playoff. This is my full playoff predictions. I have the Dallas Cowboys over the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers over the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going to have a 1-2 on, on the NFC side. I really think that the Cowboys at home are near unstoppable and the Niners are really going to turn up. Unfortunately for the Niners, I think that game's going to be a three-point win for the Niners. It could go down to the wire. High-scoring affair. I think Brock Purdy is going to have a big-time game. And if you want someone to watch on for the Rams, you can go with like a Puka Nakua. But Cooper Cup, I think, is going to be very impactful in that game as well. So I'm going to have San Francisco play Dallas. And I'm just going to tell you this right now. I have San Francisco back at the Super Bowl. Um, they're going to win the NFC. The Cowboys on the road are so terrible. San Francisco, I think, at ho- home, I think they're going to walk through the Cowboys. I'm going to say it's pretty close. 27-17, I think, would be my final f- score for that. I think Dak Prescott chokes under pressure, loses the conference title. I think the, the 49ers will go to the Super Bowl. On the AFC side, I have the Buffalo Bills over the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens over the Houston Texans. The Texans' inexperience is going to haunt them in this game. I think the Ravens walk over them 34-10. to I think the Ravens' defense is really going to be able to shut down this aerial attack of the Texans. Then the Buffalo Bills getting their revenge against the Kansas City Chiefs up in Buffalo. It's going to be freezing. I would want, I'm would i going to love to see that matchup. Go, those two go head-to-head. I think it's a close game. I think Josh Allen finally gets his revenge over Patrick Mahomes. Give me the Buffalo Bills. My Super Bowl team, you know, a team that loves to defend annoying adversity is the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to have the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl against the 49ers. I think the Bills get a late comeback win against the 40, against the Ravens. I would say they win by a touchdown. Josh Allen makes his statement and advances his team to the Super Bowl. And I have the Niners still winning the Super Bowl. I, I This just makes sense. You know, you pick the team in the beginning of the year, and you still have them win the Super Bowl. I just feel like that's right. Brock Purdy is going to win Super Bowl MVP. And I really think this Niners defense is going to have a big-time day against this Buffalo Bills team. Listen, I don't think the Bills really have a chance to get many stops against Brock Purdy. He's so many weapons from Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Kittle. Can they use those weapons right? And can the Niners defense go out there and get some big-time stops? I'm going to put more trust in the Niners. I'm going to have them win the Super Bowl still, just like I did back in September. And that now that will be the end of today's episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you like what you see, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. For now, I'm Robbie Basil saying so long. See you guys Friday. Goodbye, everyone.